Now back to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Jacob Tammy, there. That'll bring up second down. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Boy oh, stays up. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. Where do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Back to throw, and that is incomplete. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver, and it's third down. And that was incomplete, but I don't know how much of that falls on the quarterback. He was pressured. Brandon, the rush showed up so fast, the quarterback had no chance to get the ball downfield. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw, and that is incomplete. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae. So out come the Falcons now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before and realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. I remember growing up playing basketball. My coach has always talked about communicating on defense, making sure you talk on defense, know where your screens are, know where the cuts are coming from, who has who. But guess what? It's the same thing in football. Even though there's more noise out there, you can hear all the screams of screen, screen. It's defense, the bench, everyone let them know what the play was, and that's why they're able to react. And this is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Falcons! Julio Jones. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there. And, and that's caught inside the 35. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 42 yards. Detroit, and the offense Detroit. lining up first and 10. Detroit, well, we know Detroit. he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. He'll drop to throw. It's caught left side, Tammy. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to bring up a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give him a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Second down following the run. 
Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. On second down, Freeman. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. He lost two there, and it's third down. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player, it's just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Nick Perry in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. And now it's second and goal. They toss to Freeman. Yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And it looks like this will likely be the last play before we hit the two-minute warning. Let's see if they can sneak one more good play in before the two-minute signal. They'll drop the throw on the screen. This is Coleman, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has? That's caught inside the 20. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 56 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that one. Both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. And this play goes nowhere, losing yardage back to the 15. Holding offense. So oftentimes you see defensive holding here. It's offensive holding for the flag. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a game. 15 yards through the air on a first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback. Got him for sack number nine now on the year. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust to the path for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that Atlanta now coming out on the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front 
You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. They'll set up a throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So second and ten here. So many offense want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, look we'll to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Back now at Lambeau. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. Second down here. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. They'll set up to throw. Deep drop. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And, oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Looking to throw. Getting it out left side to Sanu. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be fourth. Yeah, here now come the Falcons. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead there. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. He'll look to throw. And he's got his man, the tight end Tammy. And he'll go down at the 28. Call it a gain of seven and it gets him a new set of downs. So the offense has it first and 10. Here we go now. Now a play fake here on first down. And complete on the right side. It's Tammy. Holding defense. The penalty is declined. In the red zone this time. They come up in an offset eye. After the penalty, here's Freeman. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Throw here. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Christian Jones. Not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. It's their quarterback taking it in. And the Falcons will add a... Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and ten. That one looks like he'll throw here. The left side completion to Jones. And now the Packers going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Getting it out left side to Sanu. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. They'll drop to throw. Rolling to his right. And they're going to get... And they force him to the sideline, corral him out of bounds here behind the line of scrimmage. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to put coverage here. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. They'll set up a throw. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. And he will at least be able to fall on it himself. But it was fourth down, and the possession changes. He'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. It's caught, left side, Tammy. Now hold everything here, we're gonna get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, they've got two more to use here in the final stages. He'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. And he takes it in for the score on the game's final play, so it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. Or as our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little land yap, a little extra. Well, partner, there's something special.